You were the apostolic see. It was said you would destroy the heretics, not join them. Billy O'Queen! On my channel, I talk about how you know the councils forbid and anathematize any changes to the creed. The filioque does go against scripture. I had I had many. Uh, I ended up having to do many videos about it because on a, on one level, it's a very simple issue. Mm -hmm. You can actually pinpoint it what the problem exactly is. Uh, on, on the other hand, it's a difficult issue, and and what makes it difficult is that a lot of people use some of the terms that they don't even know about. So like. They, they say, oh, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. But, like, you ask them, what do you mean by procession? It's like, uh, uh, uh I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. I've, I've, I ask this to multiple people every time, like, this conversation it just makes more sense to me. It's like, okay, what do you think procession means? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it made sense to me when someone was telling me what it was about. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the main, I, I think the creedal argument is, is good. It's decent. But I think you kind of have to define the terms, right? Like, what is it? What does the creed say when it says the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father or the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son? Yeah. Um, and what it means, especially if you read the writings of the Cappadocian Fathers, is that it's talking about hypostatic procession. That is, the manner in which the Holy Spirit exists, right? So does he exist in the manner of begetting? No, that's how the Son exists, right? He be, he's begotten of the Father, but the Holy Spirit ex exists in the mode of proceeding from the Father. And so why is it just from the Father and not from the Father and the Son? Well, it's because the the power, the, the personal property of being cause is unique to a divine person alone. It's not it's not common to the Trinity, because if it was common to the Trinity, it will it will beget another Trinity and it will beget more divine person, etc. etc. It doesn't make any logical sense, right? Mm -hmm. If that power was inherent in all of the divine persons, or if that power was inherent in, in the Father and the Son alone. That will make the Holy Spirit less than God, which is obviously heretical. So it's it's a it's a property that is proper to a divine person alone, right? So only one divine person has it in the Trinity. This is a point emphatically made by various different church fathers like Saint Gregory of Nyssa, various different works for that personal properties are not first of all, they're not communicated. You can't communicate that to another person because it will be like communicating your personhood to another person. Can I communicate like Davidness <laughs> to you and make it David Kyle? Like obviously no, right? Yeah. So it's like it's like that, and so it's something that is inherent and unique to the person of the Father alone, which is why the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father alone. So the question then here mm. is, well, how do we explain the relationship between the Son and the Holy Spirit? Because it seems like this is used by various different church fathers. They even use the term procession for the whole holy spirit for the father and the son how do we understand how it seems to be the case even in revelation 22 1. and so this is made the case by making a distinction between hypostatic procession and energetic procession which is the eternal procession of the holy spirit from the father through the son so for example the holy spirit is a man is the love between the father and the son and he manifests that eternally so in that sense there's an eternal uh energetic procession from the Father through the Son of the Holy Spirit. And then there's a temporal procession that is the Holy Spirit being sent to creation from the Father through the Son. So uh, you can speak of a procession in that sense, but that's not what the creed is saying. Right? The creed is not yeah. talking about procession of the Holy Spirit in that sense. It's talking about the procession of the, of the Holy Spirit in the sense of hypostatic procession, because that's what John 15, 26 is referring to. And we can understand this by seeing how Christ distinguishes between the procession of the Holy Spirit, right, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, and the sending of the Holy Spirit, which is from the Father and the Son. We as Orthodox, we're completely fine with saying the Holy Spirit is sent from the Father and the Son and proceeds in that sense. We're completely fine with saying that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of the Son. But as St. John Damascus says, we say that he's the Spirit of the Son, but not from the Son, right? Yeah. He's the Spirit from mm -hmm. God. He's the Spirit from the Father. So... That's how we will how we will explain uh, explain some of the patristic writings. And once you explain these things, and once you showcase that the main problem is that the that there's only one cause in the Godhead, and that's the Father, and that the Holy Spirit is caused from the Father alone. This is emphatically argued by Saint Gregory, uh, Saint Maximus the Confessor in his letter to Marinus, and by the Capitolian Fathers. Any filioquist metaphysic is completely demolished and unacceptable. Wrong. And what the Council of Florence argues with the causation is the Council of Florence basically said that the Holy that the Holy Spirit is caused from the Father and the Son, dogmatically, right? Yeah. End of the debate. So there's a big difference between the two positions, it's not just a language issue either. That was perfect. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
the Filioque really is correct, then why are the Eastern Catholics, who have full communion with Rome, allowed to say things like this? I, I think Pope Benedict would have agreed with me, we eventually need the Filioque taken out of the Roman Creed. They don't recite it, they want it removed, and they venerate Gregory Palmas, who said this about the Filioque. How can he be venerated as a Roman Catholic? saint when he died hundreds of years after the schism he denied the filioque this makes no sense this is a contradiction we have multiple instances of popes like benedict and francis going to mass and reciting the creed without the filioque but the east has never done this the east has never recited the filioque because the filioque is wrong. wrong the eastern patriarchs never return the favor by reciting the filioque versus the west and the popes will come and recite the creed without the filioque another vindication that the filioque is not necessary and that it's wrong i used to be a roman catholic please if you're catholic watch these videos they will help you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you. God bless.